Oh gosh, White House sends letter to news execs. Okay, so I'm I I'm congested. I got this cold from the kids going back to school. A little congested. I'm like reading this. I read the first paragraph. I'm like, this can't be true. This is from CNN. White House sends letter to news execs urging outlets to ramp up scrutiny of GOP's Biden impeachment inquiry based on lies. I read the first paragraph. The White House sent a letter to the top U.S. news executives on Wednesday, urging them to intensify their scrutiny of House Republicans after speaking Ke- Speaker Kevin McCarthy launched an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden despite having found no evidence of a crime. What are you talking about? There's no evidence of a crime, Neil. <laughs> that is their talking point. By the way, You, I, I wish we had time. We'd just do a montage of everyone going, no evidence of a crime. That's all what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So we talk about exposing the corrupt lying media here on the show. This is it. But what's fascinating to me is, and I just couldn't believe I was reading the story last night, and I woke up in the morning, read it again. I'm like, yeah, that's literally what happened. CNN's admitting that the White House is giving them talking points. Mm-hmm. So 40 years ago, you would win a Pulitzer for digging deep on how exactly this happened, right? I mean, Watergate, like, bad. This, just as bad. You mm-hmm. can't be giving talking points to your media outlets. I mean, this is, look, this is every authoritarian regime in the world, every banana republic does the exact same thing. These are the approved talking points. This is what you're going to talk about mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. What happened to freedom of the press? And they're yeah. supposed to be asking hard questions. There now, there, and there are some good ones, but not in the mainstream media. Mm-hmm. T- to your point, like you turn on the TV, right? Your wife turns on the TV. It's like it's it's propaganda. It's no longer people that are interested in the news. I had a discussion with a reporter from NPR who actually liked during during the campaign. And I told him at the convention, I said, you know, as long as you just keep assuming that everyone's an asshole, you will do a good job. And that's supposed mm-hmm. to be their job. There's yeah. no friends. I don't like the left or the right. I hate you both equally. Perfect. Keep doing that because you're an advocate for the people and for the truth, and both sides are going to lie. Mm-hmm. That's a good point, Neil, but we got to go to this breaking story. An alien was found in a <laughs> Peru mine and uh, brought in front of Congress in Mexico. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's actually somebody I was talking about why journalism is so different these days, and it's because back in the day they came from blue-collar families, and now mm-hmm. they all are Ivy League. So they're going to same schools, same parties, same skull and bones, and – Mm-hmm. And uh, bones and scones, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Bohemian Grove as uh, the elites running yeah. the country, and mm-hmm. so it's all the same pool of people. Yeah. Hence, why they're all getting along. There was this. So are you uh, giving yeah. DEI talking points? Are you talking about yeah. diversity? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh-huh. There was a. <laughs> that's really funny, actually. <laughs> uh, there was uh, a infamous story of I think it was an NPR reporter who was really good friends with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and she was like the. I want to say it was NPR NPR's reporter for the Supreme Court. Mm. Like if that's not a conflict yeah. of interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, inevitably, they're going to have relationships with these people and get a little friendly. But as long as you don't like them, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that, that's, you right. Just don't get too attached to them. You have politicians you like, but you still got to be able to call a spade a spade when they do something mm-hmm. that's bad, right? So you can like Trump at, when he tries to take away your Second Amendment rights, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right, right. I'll, I'll be there to fight 40 that. Chess. Uh, if it 40 happens. Chess. I don't <laughs> think it's happening, but yeah, we'll see on that. But And on this Biden thing, you know. Uh, they, like you said, they, they keep saying no evidence, no evidence, no evidence. Well, if you go to the uh, House Oversight Committee's website, uh, they have a whole page dedicated to the Biden crime family and the investigation. Let's, let's pull that up. Can uh, you put that in the ch- uh, the? Yeah, I, I could uh, put the link in there because uh, they they post this evidence for themselves. So, uh, you know, for them to argue that there is no evidence out there. Well, uh, nor the House Oversight evidence. Committee is posting it. So is there a more credible thing than the uh, House Oversight Committee? Well, uh, so I'll, yeah, I'll throw mean, that down there more for you. Than that, but, uh, <laughs> um, but, they don't uh, need evidence. Line right 17 there, Dawson. Okay. They don't need evidence. They need probable cause. That's what they need. That's right. Who, who's the big guy? 10% for the big guy. Who's the big guy? This yeah. isn't convicting. This is charging. Right. Right. Well, it's not. Yeah, it's it's it, it's, it's the pre- equivalent, right? Yeah, in criminal the, law. Of- well, but not even that. It's the preliminary charging because it's actually the investigation. Yes. They have not actually formally impeached. Yes. Mm-hmm. Babylon B had the funniest meme who sent that to me what am i doing dad yeah so go and scroll down there dawson hold on Uh, one second i have to bring up this hilarious thing oh nope okay yeah keep going down there i'll find it i'll find it in a second and right there you'll see the key evidence uh that's listed out one of them is an interactive timeline of the biden's pay for play schemes the uh oversight committee report revealing the biden dealings with foreign countries biden bank records memorandum showing the family create over 20 shell companies Key findings from the IRS whistleblowers, whistleblower transcript, press releases, 
a follow-up letter seeking a transcribed interview in the wake of the IRS whistleblower's explosive testimony, and the FBI Form 1023 alleging that then-Vice President Joe Biden engaged in a bribery and extortion scheme and ultimately received $5 million from a Burisma executive. So, you know, how's that for evidence? <laughs> that sounds like some pretty damning evidence to me. And uh, it's about time that the, you know, Republicans in Congress finally acted on this. This is why we were doing this at the state fair. We were telling people we had to impeach Joe Biden because he's com uh, committed all these unconstitutional actions. And unless it's on record, you know, we'll see what happens in the Senate. There's a lot of rhinos in the Senate, uh, but at least we can put these people on record. Same thing with the House. Put them on record. Let's see where, you know, the votes are at, uh, because if you're not willing to endure uh, to uh, impeach Joe Biden, then you're a rhino. And, you know, they're acting like there's not the votes there right now, too, which mm -hmm. is really fascinating. Yeah, that's what CNN and the others keep saying, that uh, McCarthy doesn't have the votes. That's why he's doing this on his own, which maybe it's true. I don't know. You know, you have to ask each of these uh, individual members, but uh, it would be interesting. I think, ultimately, they should all fall in line. My man, George Santos, he's all in favor of uh, <laughs> what's going on right now. He says McCarthy's doing a great job. Uh, but... You know, and I'm semi-impressed with McCarthy. Uh, he's taking things further than I expect him to. Uh, but also, also, I love what Matt Gates is doing and holding him accountable, saying that if you don't, you know, uh, fulfill the promises you made to us when you ran for speaker, then Matt Gates is going to stand up and try to get him removed. Uh, so, you know, th there's always a lot of stuff going on within D.C., but so far I'm semi-impressed <laughs> with McCarthy, and I love what Matt Gates is doing because – we need the we need the whole truth and uh, we need everything exposed. So I think that, um, you know, it's McCarthy's playing this kind of perfect now for where he is, because I, I think he's going to ha essentially have his cake and eat it, too, because he knows that there's not going to be an impeachment vote because I don't think he has the votes. Hmm. He's going to give talking points that the conservatives um, in like the Freedom Caucus, for example, can take back and say, hey, we. We investigated. They'll use the word impeachment, even though it was an impeachment investigation, even though mm -hmm. that's a step before even recommending impeachment. Yeah. Um, I know that there aren't the votes. It was too tight. And there's too many people that got in that were in districts that voted Biden, but were frustrated enough that they sent a Republican to the mm -hmm. House of mm -hmm. first term right. people that are vulnerable. Um, but nonetheless, even if some by some miracle you got the impeachment to come out of the House, it's going to die in the yeah. Senate, right? Oh, of course. Right. So all of this, I think, for people looking at it from the outside, don't get too excited. This is the political theater. This is the strongly worded letter from the Republican so-and-so about mm -hmm. something they didn't like, right? It's it's uh, smoke and mirrors. It means absolutely nothing. And mm -hmm. don't change who you vote for or think someone did a great job just because they presented you with the dog and pony mm -hmm. show. This is the game in Washington. Yeah, but behind it right. is a very important tool is impeachment. So I don't want to undermine what's going on here. And I'm very pro-impeachment. We just did a booth about it. Because when a person acts out of line, and this actually comes before I think he's present, so I'm not sure th what they're putting in front, impeachment's the correct measure, but then again, there's nothing else you can do against a sitting president. Mm -hmm. But it's like when they act out of line, you have to impeach them. And there's a high bar, in, and that's what you're referring to, is mm -hmm. convicting in the Senate, right. two-thirds, meaning like it's very obviously a crime. Mm -hmm. It's very obviously a crime that was committed when he infringed on the First Amendment rights. The judge mm -hmm. in that case, Missouri, whatever, the Missouri versus Biden administration, mm -hmm. said this is the greatest violation of the First Amendment in the history of this country. Right. An amendment he, well, a document he swore an oath to uphold. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.